A very good afternoon to you. Today is Wednesday, the 13th of March, 2024. You're listening to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska, a program which is broadcast regularly. And uh, we are, as part of that program, delivering to you uh, on the topic of uh, the Macedonian question. In particular, we've been talking about uh, Professor Dr. Igor Yanev's um, latest publication, a uh, publication published in 2023, titled The Prespa Agreement as Cultural Genocide of the Macedonian National Identity Towards the Termination of an Illegal Treaty. So towards a termination uh, of a, uh, an illegal treaty, published in Belgrade, by the way. And we've been um, covering um, uh, several chapters al already. We will continue today with um, the chapter um, four. And uh, I'm very pleased to be able to do that. And I'm grateful to Professor Dr. Igor Yanev, who is a specialist um, uh, when it comes to um, constitutional law uh, and in particular, um, international law, in fact. Mm. So uh, here we go. After the PRESPA forum in Ohrid uh, 2021, on the anniversary of the conclusion of the PRESPA agreement, the leader of the VMRO de Pemene, uh, stated that, and we quote, so long there is a Vermeiro de Pemene, the Prespa Treaty will not be a done deal, end of quote. Basically, Christian Miskovsky rejected the Prespa Agreement with a view to renegotiate it, or if uh, that shows in future to be possible, to nullify the treaty. The problem of uh, illegality of imposed denomination of external act uh, becomes visible to almost everyone in the country when Vimero de Pemene proposed to the national um, uh, parliament a resolution defining, defining the so-called red lines, red lines is in quotation, or borders, borders to... Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, borders to uh, Bulgarian uh, <clears throat> um, uh, so-called uh, Bulgarian assimilation in negotiations with Bulgaria over the identity against the, ex in quotation, exaggerated Bulgarian demands and blackmails. Um, Zaev indicated that he was ready to accept the draft resolution on uh, the red lines, but only if there was a full new constitutional name of the state contained in that resolution, that is the Republic of North Macedonia. That was unacceptable for Vermeero. They stated that Vermeero de Pemene will not add North, <laughs> North in the resolution of on the red lines of the Republic of Macedonia. After some compromises related to the abbreviation of the name of the state that is RN, um, RN Macedonia, for the first time after more than three years, all Macedonian parties voted for the common uh, or joint resolution. Against that resolution accepted by all um, ethnic Macedonian members in the parliament were only the um, Albanian parties. And that outcome was not a surprise. It was not a surprise. Albanian parties, and in fact, practically all ethnic Albanian um, population or people in the state of Macedonia were strong supporters of the Bulgarian Treaty Compromise and the Prespa Agreement. <laughs> Interesting. Essentially, the Albanian factor or the political parties in Macedonia sided with the Bulgarian national interest. Strange. To me, it is strange. To anyone with a sound mind would be strange. 
On the other hand, it appears that the Bulgarian government was actually more interested in the preservation and protection of the PRESPA agreement than the Greeks. PRESPA Act guaranteed that nowadays Macedonians were an artificial nation, an artificial nation, and that fundamental element perfectly supported Bulgarian assimilation thesis, the concept about Macedonians being an invention by Tito and Stalin. Uh, that is that uh, there were no Macedonians prior to 1944 and before the Second World War since they were Bulgarians. According to the Bulgarian historians, Bulgarian army liberated Macedonia from the Serbs and was not a conquest occupation army. This argument apparently contradicts well-known facts that the Bulgarian state in the Second World War sided with Germany and its Nazi coalition. The fact that the Macedonians lived before the Second World War was well documented and even Zayev's government, otherwise pushing for compromise, couldn't support further negotiations. Remarkably, it should be noted that the Greeks also advocated the concept that Macedonians before 1944 never existed and that misleading story regarding artificial nation, they were successfully sold in the United Nations organs and members of the UN between 1993 and 1995. As for the difference between the Bulgarian and Macedonian languages, I can only mention a simple well-known fact that the foreign students who studied in Skopje I Macedonian language could not understand the Bulgarian language. And on the other side, those students who studied Bulgarian likewise couldn't understand the Macedonian language. Even uh, a small percent of foreign students skillful in both languages with respect to conversation always experience hardship in writing, in their writing capacity, and they needed to learn these languages separately. <laughs> it is to some extent uh, a situation similar with the Serbians who tried and even succeeded to understand a Russian language but despite their natural talents, usually still needed an active education if they actually want to write in Russian. In conclusion, says Professor Dr. Igor Iyanev, from my experience, there's very little in common between Macedonian and Bulgarian languages. Likewise, we should also notice at this point that uh, the ancient Macedonian and the ancient Greek alphabets were sufficiently different. Apropos languages, a Greek claim, um, a Greek claim that they or originated from the ancient Macedonians seem to be inaccurate. There is a large amount of scientific historical literature that actually proved that the ancient Greeks couldn't understand the language of the ancient Macedonians language. And this simple uh, fact was never used or exploited by apparently inexperienced Macedonian diplomats in the UN and later when government already decided to start a legally baseless negotiations with Greece over its identity. As we've already explained, these negotiations invoking an ancient history with effects on our present day legal consequences on the status of sovereign state in the United Nations were irrelevant for the so-called name uh, dispute. The ancient history may not uh, have uh, any legal bearing on such states' rights or alleged uh, irredentism, as indicated by the ICJ in its judgment of 2011, by rejecting accusations of irredentism, irredentism uh, from the Macedonian side. From historical point of view solely, it seems quite apparent that neither modern ethnic Macedonians with predominantly Slavic roots, not of Bulgarian roots or origin, since Bulgarian were more closely related to the Tatarian or Mongol Turkmen tribes, neither modern Greeks have an, an, an ancient Macedonian blood or genetics, since national genetics mixture genetic mixture was intensive in a very long period of time. It is well known that ancient Macedonian emperor and autocrat Philip II 
conquer the Greek pre-democratic um, pre states and being ruthless, ruthless <laughs> barbarian, he and his son Alexander the Great, or Alexander Makedonsky, accepted the Greek culture and different Hellenic traditions. In conclusion, by, um, what have we got here? Uh, adding special obligatory designation, in quotes, north, before the term Macedonia, historically speaking, nothing was accomplished. We now got the Macedonians from the north. As for legal effects and consequences, as shown already in the previous chapters of this book, it is quite another story. As a result of the violations of mandatory prefix, that is the prefix of North, that is its omission, Greece constantly protested whenever some official organ or politician of, of a renamed country, that is Macedonia, used the old name <laughs> Republic of Macedonia or simply Macedonia. Is there an old name or a new name? Hmm. North Macedonia nowadays and actually forever in future is in fact under constant supervision by the Greek uh, government and the country and that country in accordance with the PRESPA agreement may openly intervene in the internal affairs of the other country on the permanent basis. Hmm. Wow. Such privileges. Recently, the Greek Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dan Diaz, visited Skopje on, Skopje is, by the way, the capital of Macedonia, Macedonia, the Republic of Macedonia. He visited Skopje on his task to check the implementation of the PRESPA agreement. Woo! And to warn Skopje about foreign policy priorities. During his visit to Skopje, the Macedonian government, to satisfy him, to appease him, please him, Change the name of the National Archaeological Museum in Skopje. Whew. It should also be noticed or noted that after the registration of the PRESPA agreement in the United Nations, actually in the United Nations Secretariat, the Macedonian government immediately created another deal with Greece that provided Greek Air Force to guard the Macedonian airspace. What? Did you know about this? I'll read this again. It should also be noted, says Professor Dr. Igoriane, that after the registration of the PRESPA agreement in the United Nations Secretariat, the Macedonian government immediately created another deal with Greece that provided the Greek Air Force to guard the Macedonian airspace. Invasion of the country. Another foreign country <laughs> flying over Macedonia um, as a state. Hmm. Would Israel like that? Would uh, the UK like that? Would the USA like that? Would any other country like another foreign country to be flying their air planes hmm. above their country? Why would the Macedonian government do that? From that moment, when the airspace became subject to pol uh, of policing by the Greek Air Force, it became obvious to anyone that Macedonia was never a security threat to the Hellenic state, as was presented in the UN in 1993, but rather vice versa. Hmm. After humiliation from Greece with respect to imposed new name and the PRESPA agreement actually representing the capitulation of Macedonia, the Bulgarian explicit veto for Macedonian accession to EU based on the ultimatum to adapt its Macedonian identity, that is to change it to the Bulgarian one, spilled over the tolerance of the Macedonian people and especially of intellectuals in Macedonia. The president of Manu, Lyubcho Kotsarev, called for a review of the treaties with Bulgaria and Greece and accused the government of undermining the work of the famous academic Blaze Koneski, who codified the modern Macedonian language and all other linguist uh, Macedonian professors. Furthermore, academic Kotsarev encouraged linguistic professors to give a resistance to the government strategies to abolish the linguistic department at the university in the capital of Skopje and elsewhere. 
Manu, in fact, revealed a secret plan of the government to abolish the Macedonian language and literature departments. Wow. In conclusion, Manu presidency and particularly uh, historians and linguistic professors actually understood the Bulgarian strategy aiming at speedy assimilation and cultural genocide and ethnocide, as we have already mentioned previously. It should be noted that before the UN Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous Peoples, 2007, several ECO, SOC, and UNESCO's documents actually banned discrimination based on assimilation or degradation of national cultures. Among these were the ECOSOC document from 1985 and more recently UNESCO's Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity, 2001. There is also a huge proportion or portion of scientific articles and books covering sub the subject of ethnocide from uh, famous R. Lemkin, 1933, to William Shabbos, 2000, Genocide in International Law, The Crime of Crimes, Cambridge University Press, pages 189, ISBN is 9780521787901, reprinted in 2013, and S. James Anaya, Indigenous Peoples in International Law, from 2004. In the Declaration of San Jose, UNESCO also addresses and works to define ethnocide. UNESCO de defines the term as follows, and we quote, ethnocide means that an ethnic group is denied the right to enjoy, develop and transmit its own culture and its own language, whether collectively or individually. This involves an extreme form of vast, massive an extreme form of massive violation of human rights and in particular, the right of ethnic groups to respect uh, for their cultural identity. In conclusion, says Professor Dr. Igor Yanev, Bulgarian conditioning and veto for EU admission of Macedonia along with the submissive policy of Zaev's administration making their own people nationless uh, and or as a population that have Bulgarian cultural roots and accepting the Bulgarian national identity represent a textbook example of ethnocide carried out by domestic government. So-called legal ground for identity transformation is in the Bulgarian treaty, 2017 creating a joint commission for remodeling and standardization of history and culture. At this point, we should notice that the similar cultural and educational historical commission for remodeling the identity was also created by the PRESPA agreement and that Zayev's administration accepted all the conclusion of that commission with, or recommendations or conclusions of that commission with not even a single reservation. Zayev's government accepted the international and uh, domestic restrictions on original identity, even as formal bans and limitations in the UN. That was just another example of blatant ethnocide of nullification, and in fact, comprehensive preparation for the accepting assimilation rules and policies by the Bulgarian hegemon. After the reactions of Manu against the Bulgarian attempts to assimilate Macedonians, calling them North Macedonians, and considering that this name is only another designation that means Bulgarians, reacted Bulgarian Academy of Science. They said that there is no Macedonian language. No Macedonian language. Such position apparently was in violation of uh, the above mentioned legal norms and principles of many organizations, including the International PEN Declaration, PEN Declaration on Cultural Rights. Moving along, along with academic, the academic community, many civil sector organizations in Macedonia 
uh, have recognized the ethnogenocidal character of the Bulgarian and Greek or the PRESPA agreements. As rhetoric between two countries lost the control, Macedonians organized themselves as an act of self-defense against the Bulgarian assimilation in Macedonia and a Greek assimilation directed to ethnic Macedonian minority in Greece. After the PRESPA agreement, ethnic Macedonian minorities ceased to exist and therefore became the subject of assimilation by Greece. There were many organizations that started peaceful boycott of the oppressive policies based on PRESPA agreement and newly imposed artificial identity. Both Greece and Bulgaria never wanted to recognize Macedonian national minorities in their countries and were prone to assimilate those people on their territories. Both agreements will Bulgaria and Greece have had the same strategic aim of eliminating Macedonian minorities in their countries respectively through elimination of national identity by misusing contracting processes, uh, con misusing contracting process and imposed agreements with illegal subject matter. Even from the very start of the implementation of the signed PRESPA agreement, in 2018, a group of Macedonian intellectuals refused to recognize the legality of uh, apparently um, anti-Macedonian um, intellectuals, um, anti-national and anti-constitutional uh, changes um, uh, aimed at institutional nullification of the national identity. In the proclamation of the boycott of constitutional changes, more than 100 Macedonian intellectuals declared the following, and we quote, we, the Macedonians, by birth and citizenship in all parts of Macedonia, in the homeland and in the world, guided by the majority will of the people, expressed in two referendums, mandatory in 1991 and consultative in 2018 unite against the unconstitutional and unlawful so-called PRESPA agreement. We invite everyone, associations, trade unions, institutes, scientific and higher education institutions, informal movements, online groupings, political parties, diaspora, as well as individuals, professors, and other intellectuals, artists, athletes, workers, and so on, with all their credibility and public engagement, to unite now with one single goal, organizing a continuous and massive resistance to the illegitimate and illegal constitutional changes. Our joint support of this proclamation does not and should not imply future endorsement or common political action in any upcoming election. All societal stakeholders who support this proclamation, regardless of the ideological, political, religious, or ethnic affiliation, manifest respect for governance of the right and the concern for the future of the state, confirming the historical maturity of the nation, putting the general self-interest for the purpose of accomplishment a higher goal, preserving the sovereignty of the Republic and the right to self-determination of the people. The main reason for this movement is the arrogant attitude of the government that ignores the clearly expressed will of the citizens against the unconstitutional so-called PRESPA agreement manifested through a massive boycott that resulted in an unsuccessful referendum of which two thirds of the voters did not approve it. Therefore, in this dramatic historical moment of our Republic trapped by a corrupt political clique that ignores both the popular will and the constitution, we ask for urgent and unconditional termination of the process of illegal constitutional changes, unilateral legal annulment of the denounced and already rejected so-called PRESPA agreement, strict compliance with domestic and international laws, permanent protection of the name of the state Macedonia, immediate dissolution of the assembly and the announcement of the early parliamentary elections. We express our determination that if the above requirements are not accepted, resistance will continue and grow, and all institutional and non-institutional instruments at our disposal will undoubtedly be used. We stress that the civic resistance will be and remain non-violent." End of quote. 
After 2018 and 2019, there were many initiatives to terminate the PRESPA agreement by the patriotic organizations, such as the World Macedonian Congress and his the president Todor Petrov and some non-governmental institutions as the Macedonian Pen Center. The Macedonian Pen requested that a draft resolution be placed at the agenda of the International Pen and be adopted by the World Institution. In the draft resolution of Macedonia, the Pen Center Bulgaria was targeted and accused for its assimilation policy. And this draft resolution proposes the following statements of condemnation with respect to the Bulgarian policy of cultural oppression and discrimination. The Writers for Peace Committee of PEN International declares that it condemns the conditioning and denial of the Macedonian language, culture, history, identity, and nationality, condemns all aggressive diplomatic efforts of the Hellenic Republic in denying Macedonian identity so far, as well as all previous and future efforts of the same type of any Balkan neighboring country against, including Macedonian identity, any particularly in particular condemns the, deni the denial of the Macedonian language, culture, history, identity, and nationality in the past, present, and future. Finds these exclusive one-sided and ultimatum-based diplomatic conditions, denials, and demands on the change of identity to be contrary to the basic principles of cultural relations, scientific inquiry, knowledge, collegiality, honesty, objectivity, and openness, and to contemporary historical pluralism. Objects to these claims as they contradict the fundamental international norms on self-determination, the international laws on maintaining peace and settling disputes, and the principles on basic human rights of the states and members of the UN embedded in the UN Charter, rights embedded in the Charter of Pen International and Pen International's manifestos and declarations on peace and linguistic rights. Calls upon the international community to condemn this new trend in the Balkan politics and these specific claims of the Republic of Bulgaria against sovereignty and uh, inalienable rights of Macedonia in an effort to develop cooperative relations among these two states based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination and to maintain international peace and security by peaceful means and in conformity with the principles of justice and international law, adjustment or settlement of international disputes or situations which might lead to a breach of the peace. In conclusion, it should be noted that such magnitude of Bulgarian cultural oppression coupled with the large scale of domestic censorship and human rights violations would not be possible if the current Macedonian government headed by Prime Minister Zaev was not in a coalition and supported by dominant ethnic Albanian parties with their own political agenda for Macedonia's future. Domestic oppression therefore is rooted in the character and structure of the political system and a system of national security. Namely, all governments and administrators in the history of Macedonia were also strongly supported by pro-Bulgarian elements, people faithful to Bulgaria and uh, Albanian factors, people faithful to Albania, that in, uh, in fact took important or crucial positions in the present Zaev government and state security sector services. Namely, a minister of foreign affairs was and still is Albanian, uh, Buyar Osmani from the Albanian party DUI and the director of the Agency for Intelligence is an Albanian, Erold Musliu, faithful to DUI. Director of Intelligence Agency E. Musliu was also in control of all national intelligence services as their informal head. In that light, and particularly considering the fact that each winning political coalition in Macedonia needed to include the Albanian party or parties in the government, it's reasonable to derive a conclusion that approximately 20% approximately of Albanian minority population control, in fact, the huge ethnic Macedonian majority, writes Professor Dr. Igor Yanev in his publication. 
political system based on the rule of minority that is the Albanians faithful to the country of Albania, another country, and human rights violations therefore is not a democratic one, but rather autocratic or the hybrid one as indicated by international experts. As for other Macedonian neighbors, the PRESPA agreement and a new security deal made with Greece that the Air Force control the Macedonian sky, we may observe that Greece is in a position to project its military might far beyond its national borders and control the military security of Macedonia and even regional security, for instance, covering airspace of Montenegro too. As indicated um, earlier, it should be spotted that in all processes from the phase of signing uh, to the registration of the PRESPA agreement in the UN, all Albanian parties in Macedonia, both in the government, that is DUI, and from the opposition, unanimously sided with Zaev and supported the PRESPA agreement and the PRESPA process to the very end. Furthermore, Albanian parties advocated strict observance of the PA provisions and usage of the new constitutional name with no exceptions. Same situation was spotted with respect to the Bulgarian Agreement 2017, where all Albanian political parties unanimously supported the finalization of the Macedonian-Bulgarian talks in order to implement the Bulgarian Treaty to the letter, and if needed, to create an annex to that agreement fulfilling all Bulgarian, Bulgarian wishes. At the end, when Zaev's party SDSM gave support to the mentioned resolution in the parliament drawing borders for negotiations with Bulgaria, all Albanian parties collectively and in coordination refused to give him support. That was the first time that Albanians didn't give their support to the SDSM. In fact, the Albanian parties abandoned Zaev and SDSM, and that party alone became very unstable with respect to the preservation of the political power and coalition, losing also support of the minor Macedonian parties that previously sided with SDSM. That process of losing faith and power began even before SDSM supported the resolution or the red lines recent decision of Zaev's government to forbid the traditional collective celebrations of the National Independence Day, that is 8th of September, banning all people's assemblies indicated that his government, were apparently crucial decisions created by the Albanians, could bring only a further destabilization to the country called North Macedonia and even broader regional instability. As for National Independence Day, not surprisingly, the US President John, Joe Biden decided to send congratulation letter to the Macedonian people and the government for, um, for Independence Day, that is St. Ilya's Day, at the critical moment when Zaev couldn't decide whether to celebrate it jointly with the Bulgarians as required by the Bulgarian Friendship Treaty 2017 or alone or separately. Meanwhile, the International Pen Organization in August 2021 responded to the above mentioned Macedonian pen action, that is the draft resolution, with an official statement related by the condemnation of the Bulgarian policy of assimilation and tendencies to commit cultural oppression or cultural genocide. The writers of the Peace Committee, WFPC, and the translation and Linguistic Rights Committee, the TLRC, note with concern the politics of the exclusivist and hegemonic interpretation of history and the shared Balkan and particularly Macedonian cultural heritage, which is promoted and practiced by Balkan diplomats in the course of the previous three decades, and especially by the high Bulgarian political and institutional representatives during the last three years. This political discourse of negation of the Macedonian right of self-determination and the Macedonian historical, cultural, linguistic, and national identity is being used for the purposes of imposing conditions, blockades, and vetoes to preclude the member rights or accession talks of the Republic of Macedonia in intergovernmental organizations such as the UN, the European Union, and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Macedonian cultural heritage is labeled as artificial, falsified, and appropriated since it is interpreted as belonging exclusively to other states. 
Macedonian ethnic identity is threatened in its existence and scope as Macedonian ethnic minorities in neighboring states are deprived of internationally guaranteed democratic rights. The Macedonian language is only regarded as a regional standard and a Western dialect of the Bulgarian language. The Writers for Peace Committee and the Translation and Linguistic Rights Committee thus call, they call for full respect for the Macedonian temporal and spatial continuity, the integral Macedonian socio-cultural identity and Macedonian linguistic and cultural rights. The political denials and conditioning of the Macedonian identity are condemned by both committees, the WFPC and the TLRC, as contrary to international norms on self-determination, sovereignty, cultural heritage, diversity, maintaining peace, and on settling disputes. These intolerable practices are also contrary to the principles of fundamental human and collective rights, the rights of states and members of the UN embedded in the UN Charter, as well as contrary to the principles embedded in the Charter of PEN International and PEN International Manifestos and Declarations on Peace and Linguistic Rights. The Writers for Peace Committee and the Translation and Linguistic Rights Committee also oppose the exclusivist uh, um, appropriative and ultimatum based uh, diplomatic rhetoric and strategy towards the Macedonian identity, since they are contrary to the basic principles of scientific research, up to date scientific um, uh, methodology and contemporary historical and cultural pluralism. <clears throat> You're listening to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska on our YouTube channel. And we're talking about uh, Professor Dr. Igor Yanev's latest publication, a scholarly uh, publication. We are sharing that uh, with you with his permission. The Writers of Peace Committee and the Translation Linguistic Rights Committee call upon the international uh, community to condemn this new radical intolerant and ultimatum based approach in the Balkan and European politics and to condemn the specific claims of other states on Macedonian identity against the sovereignty and inalienable rights of Macedonian citizens. These measures are necessary to develop cooperative relations among the Balkan states based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination to maintain international peace and security by peaceful means and in conformity with the principles of justice and international law. And finally, both committees, that is the um, WFPC and the TLRC, underline the necessity for a just and unselective attitude in the application of the universal principle of self-determination and in the name of naming of cultural heritage. In conclusion, political developments with Bulgaria suggest that administration of that state violated Article 1 of the Treaty of Friendship, Good Neighborliness and Cooperation between the Republic of Bulgaria and the Republic of Macedonia, that is the 2017 document, namely, quote, Principles of International Law and Good Neighborliness, Article 1. From our point of view, um, the problem with that agreement was not in violation of some particular article, Article 1, with respect of honoring principles of the international law and good neighborliness, or Article 2 regarding to help or assistance of Bulgaria to Macedonian path, to the Macedonians' path to EU, rather than a pursuing policy of blockade for EU talks. But the very nature of the act itself with the subject matter of the agreement was an attempt to assimilate another nation that is by virtue and nature contrary to the principles of bona fide and the letter and spirit of the UN Charter regarding sovereignty, equality, non-interference, self-determination, uh, <clears throat> non-discrimination and hence policies and practices of assimilation and uh, ethnocide. And uh, we shall end it there. Uh, that was chapter 
4.2 finished now. Next uh, broadcast will contain chapter 4.3, which is titled The PRESPA Agreement, Tirana Platform, Tirana Platform is in quotation, with bilingual reform and the impact of harmful treaties to possible dis dissolution or disintegration of Macedonia, quotation, a destiny of former Yugoslavia or beyond the derogation of national identity. So that is where we are going to start um, our next YouTube video. You've been listening to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska, an independent journalist broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia. Um, Thank you once again, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.